Okay, we're sitting here today with assistant coach Joanna Luca White. Joanne, how's your summer been going? It's been a while we've talked to you. Well, summer's been going okay. You know, we've had a lot of uh, workouts since the rules changed with our workouts during the summer. We've been able to uh, have our freshmen and our returners in the gym quite a bit, um, approximately about two hours a week with both groups. And so just trying to get our hands on them and try to cultivate and mold them before we get into the thick of things next semester. Um, as far as recruiting, we've been on the road the last last week. We've been on the road about seven days, um, trying to find out, trying to find some new 49ers. So it's been pretty good thus far. You've been here for a year now. What's your transition been like, and how have you grown as a coach over the past year? Well, my transition has been pretty good. I think uh, the most important thing is that I'm around good people. Uh, I've had the opportunity to grow as a coach because I'm really taking the uh, bull by the horns with the post players and trying to develop them and make sure that they are going to, that they are going to be uh, productive for us this upcoming season. And so, you know, I would say that my first year under my belt has been a great one. We had a great season. We saw a lot of good highlights from the season. And so in order for us to move forward, we're looking at that and trying to, to improve upon what we've done. Let's talk about those post players a little bit. We lost two starters, uh, Jen Haley and Amanda Dow from that area. What do you see in this year's group that will help continue success for this program? Well, of course, we lost we lost quite a bit with Jennifer and um, Amanda leaving our program or graduating from our program. And what well, we have returning in Alexis and Kira and Gabby and um, also Olivia are people that can also – that can very well come in and contribute. And it's just about them mentally preparing themselves for what they're going to be able and what they're going to have to do for us, um, buying in defensively, rebounding, and being able to score. So, you know, flat out they can score, but the other part, the latter part of it, we got to work on. So, you know, it's a work in progress, but they're up to the challenge as I, as I am. One new thing this year for the program will be entering Conference USA. Um, you're familiar with some of the teams in the new league, uh, former Sun Belt members that will also be joining the conference this year. Uh, what do you know about these teams? Uh, let's break down the teams first. Um, you came from FIU, uh, which is also joining the league this year, in addition to a couple of other new members. Uh, just give us your thoughts on some of the teams in this league. Okay. Well, FIU being that I'm, that's the, the program that I was affiliated with for six years, definitely know quite a bit about them and that coaching style. Coach Russo has been a great coach. She's been in it for over 30 years and does a good job of getting kids where they need to be towards the end of the season, really does a good job of develop, developing them throughout the season to be impactful for the latter part of the season. So she's done a really great job. Um being that, you know, FIU the last couple of years, I can't I don't know exactly this year what they did. I think they finished in the semifinals. Um and so and then they have the returning player of the year in Jerrica Coley who led the nation in scoring. So just having that returning, somebody that can actually put the ball in the basket, who's a leader on and off the floor, I think they're gonna be a tough competitor as as far as that. Um FAU that's right up the street from Miami and Boca Raton. Um it's a new coaching staff. But they have been able to draw a lot of athletes to their program as well. And so her, she, that coach bringing in her new um, ideas and new things that she wants to do with that program, I've, I've heard that they've been doing pretty well as far as um, improving every year. And then another team that I'm familiar with because I'm, I am an alum is Middle Tennessee State University, MT. And so we know that, you know, MT has been a prominent mid-major powerhouse at this point, get they've been going to the NCAA tournament the last couple of years, and so he's done a really good job of uh, bringing those kids along and um, getting them to buy in to what he wants them to do. So they play at a fast pace, they press, um, they have kids that can shoot it, and um, most majority of their kids can shoot it. If any, if there's only one kid that can't shoot it outside, and that's Ebony Rowe. And while she's not able to shoot outside, she's going to give you a double double every night. So you know, those are things that we have look to look forward to. And you know, we're preparing this summer uh, for Conference USA, and you know, in the competition that we're going to have to deal with as far as it being more physical, more aggressive, and at a fast pace. And so we've talked about it. Now it's about our players mentally preparing themselves and physically preparing themselves. Some other new teams in the league uh, have some storied histories. Uh, Old Dominion, Louisiana Tech. What, 
what does it mean for a team like Charlotte to go up against some storied programs like that in the conference? Well, absolutely. The storied programs might be an understatement. I mean, ODU has a history of winning champions, championships back in the days when it was AI uh, double W or whatever. I can't remember. Don't quote me on that. But when they were championship team with um, Inga Nissen and Nancy Lieberman and all those that played under, you know, the ODU uh, monarch. So, you know, they have a storied history of being successful, winning championships, bringing in kids that can play and help that team push towards success. La Tech, I, I remember playing against them when I was in conference, in Sunbelt Conference. And so they've always been a powerhouse for a long time, and they've been able to get athletes from the South and just they will bang you up, run, run, very, very much a transition team, but at the same time very athletic. They can run and they can bang in the post. So those are story teams. It's going to be interesting to see how things shake out and shake up. I'm definitely betting behind or I'm pulling for Charlotte because I know what we can do. And I, I believe that we'll be in the top part of that uh, uh the top part, if not the top team in the conference, but definitely from top to bottom, it's very competitive, especially with Conference USA having an RPI totally of an, totally of an eight in comparison to the conference that we're leaving. So it's going to be uh, big shoes, um, a big uh, step for us, and big shoes for our kids to fill. But we're going to we're going to be ready and ready for the opportunity to show what we have. You've already mentioned a couple key players in the league. Um, being Jericho Coley and Ebony Rowe. Is there anybody else that really sticks out to you, uh, being a post coach, that maybe a, somebody for the fans to keep an eye out for this year? Yeah, um, Rice has a young lady, uh, Custer, that is a double double machine. And so that's one thing that sticks out to me when I'm talking to our post. We have to rebound, we have to be able to score in the paint, and we have to be able to defend so people can't get rebounds and score in the paint. So definitely her and Ebony being one of the two players, especially at the mid major level, that have been able to be in the statistics for NCAA as double double machines, that's huge. So being, you know, just. Off of st statistics alone, knowing that she's a double-double machine, that's big and that's huge for Rice. All right, Joanne, we appreciate your time today, and we'll be talking to you again soon. All right, thank you.